Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Bill Bailey. And I'm Sally. We're so glad to have you on today's broadcast from Happy Gospel Church here in Bradenton, Florida. We're believing God that today's program is going to touch your life in a very special way. I don't believe that we're connected by accident today. I believe God orchestrated this time for us to be together and today's program will be a blessing and ministry to you. I'd love to have you come and visit with us here at Happy Gospel. We have a church family that loves people yes. and we love Jesus and you would be very welcome here. Our Sunday services are 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. All of the information is on the screen. Right now, let's go into the service. I believe God is about to speak to you. When I wake up in the morning I start my day with rejoicing I've got a song I've got a song I've got a song I've got a song, got a song to sing No matter how much it's raining You'll never hear It's a song of peace that comes from above. I've got a song. I've got a song. I've got a song. I've got a song. A song to sing. Yeah, yeah. It's a song of power and of victory. It's a song of the light that is given to me. I've got a song. I've got a song. I've got a song. A song to sing. tricks won't affect me I've got his word to protect me and I've got a song I've got a song I've got a song I've got a song, got a song to, to sing, sing. Yeah, yeah. it's a song of hope it's a song of love it's a song of peace that comes from above I've got a song I've got a song I've got a song I've got a song. I've got a song. Oh. The blood of Jesus satisfies us. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation or satisfaction through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past 
through the forbearance of God. What does that mean? That means there's only one thing that would satisfy, and that is the blood. When you and I were born with a sin nature, every child, this beautiful baby that we just dedicated today, no matter how wonderful, that's a handsome young man, a beautiful, they don't come any finer looking than that one-year-old. Beautiful baby boy. But yet that baby boy, when that boy was born, was born with a sin nature. Because of the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden, all of mankind was imputed a sin nature. You can't get away from it. That's why the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's not something that you did at one time or another. It's simply who you are. You were born with this sin nature. Now, based on different circumstances, we have different proclivities or weaknesses in our life. And some weaknesses are different for different people. If I, if, if I told you today that next week we were going to do a special outreach next Sunday and we were going to have um, free alcohol before and after the service, we're going to open up a bar in the lobby. It's going to be the happy hour at the happy gospel. Bring all your friends. We're going to reach out to the community. This man right here waving his hand, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. No, wrong time to be stretching, son. And so, <laughs> just play it. Now, for most of us, we laugh at that. We don't think nothing of that. Pastor's just jesting. But there's a few of you in this room that you've struggled with alcohol. Just mentioning it causes, me medically, I'm not a doctor, but, the, but I did, I have stayed at the Holiday Inn Express. But, 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 but. but just medically, doctors say that there are endorphins that are released in your body that cause, it triggers, it's, it, it's a trigger because you struggle with alcohol just even talking about it. You stay away from restaurants like Applebee's where the entire seating of the restaurant is around a bar area. You, you stay away from it because there's a proclivity or a weakness. I remember a friend of mine uh, a preacher friend, actually, and uh, we, uh, he was here in town. This has been many years ago. He was preaching for me. We were driving by uh, some establishment. We were just driving down the road. He looked over at me and said, Pastor Bill, does any of this stuff uh, 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 do you struggle with? And I said, what are you talking about? He, and he, he, he pointed at, at uh, uh, adult establishments. And he said, they're this one and that. He said, they're everywhere. And I looked at him. I said, to be honest with you, I said, I, 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 I never even knew they were there. But obviously, he had a proclivity or a weakness. Now, every one of us have proclivities and weaknesses. Well, preacher, what's yours? It's none of your business. I can tell you one, and you probably already know it, fried chicken. Be careful how you point your finger at somebody else. You don't know the shoes that they're having to walk in. You don't know what happened to them by commission or omission. Some people struggle with issues they never should have struggled with, but they were put on them by someone else or something else. They didn't mean to when they took that one hit. They were just trying to be cool with their teenage buddies. They didn't mean to get into a lifestyle where they were hooked by it. Some people, some alcoholics, they didn't mean to become raging alcoholics. It was just one drink, and it, it perpetuated them into a lifestyle of drunkenness and debauchery. Some people, they didn't mean it? It was an honest mistake, but just one look at a picture that maybe they saw of their daddy's magazine somewhere. Maybe just one look at a video, and suddenly they became hooked. Be careful how you point your finger at somebody else. Mama always said there's three more pointing back at you. We all have to work out our own salvation, the Bible says, with fear and with trembling. But no matter how beautiful this baby boy is, and he certainly is, there still is the sin nature imputed into his life whereby he needs redemption. He needs satisfaction before a holy God. And what is that satisfaction? It is the blood of Jesus. Somebody holler, the blood of Jesus. Taking notes, Romans 3.25, God has set forth Jesus to be a propitiation or a satisfaction. How? By faith in his blood. Everybody say faith in the blood. So you know where my faith is today? It's in the blood today. My faith isn't in anything or anyone else. Can I tell you, I've been around long enough, people will disappoint you. Boy, I wish I could get some help here. People will disappoint you. 
People who you counted on, uh, they will disappoint you. They'll make bad choices. They're, suddenly relationships aren't where, where they used to be and suddenly things change. People will disappoint you. You've got to have faith that's bigger than people. Can I tell you, I've been to many churches and I, 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 I've been hurt and been struggled, but yet, listen, don't place your faith and confidence in people because people will disappoint you. Things sometimes don't work out. Circumstances will disappoint you. How many of you have ever had went through a bad circumstance and you've said, God, I deserved better than this? Anybody other than me? Many of you in this room, God, I don't know why this is happening to me. Things disappoint you. But could I tell you, you serve a God today who is bigger than your disappointments, and he's bigger than your troubles, and he's bigger than your trials. And the only faith and satisfaction before a holy God is in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, the second benefit of the blood. When we talk about being people of the blood is we are justified by the blood. Somebody say, I'm justified by the blood. Justification. I like what the good Baptists say about justification. You could just, you, you could just sound it out. God looks at me just as if I never sinned. Say that together with me. Just as if I'd never sinned. Say it one more time. Just as if I'd never sinned. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Listen to what Paul says. God has commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Everybody holler the blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. We are justified by the blood. Say it together with me. We are justified by the blood. Notice the way that Paul writes here in Romans 5, 8. God commended his love toward us. Let me break this down very quickly while we talk about justification. The term commended is better defined as demonstrated. God demonstrates his love towards us. Now, how did God demonstrate his love? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God did not condemn the world, but rather that the world through him might be saved. That that's the great gospel message. Probably the most quoted scripture in your Bible. John 3, 16. Now God demonstrates, Paul says, his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now listen closely. That demonstration was Jesus going to the cross. Jesus did not go to the cross to pay the penalty for his sins. He was sinless. There was no guile found in his mouth. He did absolutely nothing wrong. Jesus took upon himself our sins and made payment for our sins, the satisfaction of our sins by the blood that he shed upon that cross for you and for me so that when we stand before God, he would see us not through my sin, but through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. And because of that, he views me just as if I'd never sinned. God demonstrated his love. And notice this, he demonstrated his love toward us. Somebody say toward us. The love of God is demonstrated toward you. You and I didn't do anything to deserve God's love. We didn't do anything to deserve what he did for us. But rather God, even before we had an opportunity to make amends and accept the free pardon of sin by what he did at the cross, the Bible says he demonstrated his love toward toward us. Listen closely. There's some of you in this room, again, maybe you this week, or maybe you're coming from a background or a past to where you say, Pastor, you don't know what I did. You don't know where I was. You don't know who I was with. And no way could God forgive me or redeem me. Can I tell you? Yes, he can. He could save you from the uttermost to the guttermost or from the guttermost to the uttermost. God can redeem it and turn you around just as quick as I say hallelujah today. If you'll call upon Jesus, he will hear your prayers. He will answer your prayers. And if you'll ask him, he will redeem you and save you today. God demonstrates his love toward us. Somebody say toward us. In that while we were yet sinners. Now listen, while we were yet sinners. Now I understand people coming to God, but while we were yet sinners, 
In other words, while we were doing what we knew we shouldn't be doing, God demonstrates his love toward us. That's just mind-boggling to me. It's absolutely mind-boggling to me. Let me tell you a story. I'll air a little family. Mom and Daddy are with Jesus. My dad, his first wife, had a baby outside of wedlock. While my father was away working, Dad was in Alaska working, and his first wife had a child. Had uh, got involved in a relationship. She got pregnant. Had the baby. When Dad came home, he knew the baby wasn't his. And my father made his first wife put that baby up for adoption. And that child is now as old as I am, and actually a little older, and um, reached out to me a couple of years ago. My dad shared that story years later with my mother. My mom, who would be his second wife, my mother looked at my father and said, you should have taken that baby and raised that child as your own because even though that was not your baby, that wasn't that baby's fault. And to think of the love of a mother, maybe it's the maternal, the love of a mother to want to reach out and cradle that baby even knowing that this child has been born out of consequences that were contrary. That's the heart of God towards every one of us, that in our sin, he reaches out with love and with compassion. 30 seconds right here. I'll harp on it and get off of it. I am disgusted at the lack of compassion that is found in many churches in America and the Western Hemisphere today. Can I tell you, none of us have a right to point a finger at anybody else. Can I tell you, all of us are sinners, saved by the grace of God. All of us need Jesus. Our circumstances may be different. Each one of us has our own story. But we could use a dose and a baptism of compassion in this world in which we live in. Justification, number three, real quickly. I got five of these. I want to get them out before we baptize. Number three is redemption. Somebody say redemption. Yes. Ephesians 1, 7 says we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. What does redemption mean? Redemption means to buy back or secure the freedom of someone in bondage. Redemption, when you redeem something, it means that you literally buy back. You've been to Chuck E. Cheese lately? When you play the games at Chuck E. Cheese, they give you all these tokens. And the kids get excited because they get a bunch of tokens. They're not excited about the tokens, but they're excited about the value of the tokens because they can go to the counter and redeem them for toys. And if they get so many tokens, so a lot of times, here's what happens. There'll be kids running around the, the store looking for old people like me and most of you that don't know any better, and we've got a bunch of tokens, and they'll say, sir, can I have your tokens? And they'll just collect tokens like a love offering from all the old people that don't know any better. But those kids know if they get so many tokens, they can get their favorite prize at the counter. Could I tell you, God loves you and I so much that he shed his blood so that we could be redeemed. We could be bought back. We were in the hands of the devil, headed for hell without God and without hope. But God, through his blood of his only begotten son, paid the price and redeemed us and bought us back. Is there anybody thankful for redemption today? Fourthly, the fourth benefit of the blood is forgiveness. Somebody holler, forgiveness. forgiveness. Ephesians 2.13, Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. There's something special about forgiveness because it brings restoration of relationship. And the blood of Jesus brings forgiveness. There's only one way to be forgiven today, and that's through the blood. 
Now listen, let me just make it very clear today. We believe in water baptism, and we're about to do that here at the church and celebrate with those who have made professions of faith and have accepted Christ as their Savior. There's a couple that are, have recommitted their lives to Christ, and they wanted to be baptized today just to, just to begin afresh and anew. And we celebrate them today. But listen, there is no cleansing agent in the water. That water is symbolic. There's nothing in that water that's going to make them more saved or more forgiven than now. Why? Because we are saved and we are forgiven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that forgiveness restores our relationship with God. We who were once alienated, who were once afar off, have now, we have been made nigh because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in tithes and offerings. We believe in bringing our money to God and giving Him the first of our increase. We believe in that. But you can't pay God off with your tithes or with your offerings. You might can pay somebody else off, but you can't buy God by so much money putting in the offering plate. You can't put enough money in the Salvation Army kettle at Christmas to make atonement for the sins of your life for the past year. Some people believe that, but it's not biblically true. You can't confess your sins enough to a priest or a father or a bishop or a pastor and feel like, hey, I've confessed my sins and now I'm right with God. Why? Because the same person you're confessing your sins to, he's got sins of his own. What makes you think that he can forgive your sins on God's behalf? There's only one issue. There's only one way for you to be forgiven and that's by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody holler, forgiveness. Number five, the final one is we call pacification. What does it mean? It means to make peace with God. How do we make peace with God? You know, the president here lately, there's been a lot of peace going on in the Middle East. A lot of this past week, Sudan was one of those countries that is trying to make peace. Everybody's trying to make peace. But here's the issue. All of these countries in the Middle East, and listen, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the peace accords and the agreements that are, are taking place. Listen, if you lived in the Middle East and there were constantly rockets and rifles and guns pointed at you or your family or where you live, you'd want peace too. Are you following me? Say amen. I don't mean to downgrade or to degrade, but listen, those peace accords are only as good as the people who wrote their name on a signature somewhere. They're only as good as their decision to keep the peace. But yet there was one who went to the cross, Jesus, who shed his blood. And because of that blood, it made peace with those of us who by accepting that blood, we will have peace with God. The Bible says in Colossians 1.19 that he has reconciled himself to us, making peace by the blood of the cross. Sin was an enemy, but there's only one way sin can be made right, and that is through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, God has made peace with each and every one of us. If you're a sinner, the wrath of God is upon you. Not because God hates you, but he hates the sin that is upon you. Not because God doesn't love you. He loves you, but he hates the sin that is upon you. But when you allow the precious blood of the Lord Jesus to cover your heart and to cover your life, the wrath of God is removed from you. And now suddenly, God is at peace with you. And when God God is at peace with you. He wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to undergird you. He wants to lift you up. Why? All because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, have mercy. I'm thankful for the blood today. And so the scripture says in Exodus at the time of Passover that the death angel was about to come. Come on, come on, Pastor Brian. The death angel was about to come. And in so doing, all of the children of Israel were told, get your whole family, get them all in the house. Get your whole family in the house. That's why I love baptism days and special days like today because they're days where, where we, we, we want to get mom and dad and auntie and uncle and, and my cousins and, and Jimmy. We don't even like Jimmy, but Jimmy's coming to church. And, and Aunt Sue, uh, we, she talks about it, but we want Aunt Sue. I hope there's no Sue's here today. We want her in church. We want everybody in church. The Bible says that they, they would take the whole family and get them all in the house because the death angel was going to pass by in the middle of the night. Get the whole family by. 
And the scripture says, when I see the blood, he said, apply the blood over the doorpost. Every entrance, I'll give you the Bailey translation, every entrance, apply the blood over every entrance. And when you do, when the death angel comes by, he will have to pass over you. And the scripture says that they would take and they would apply the blood. Now, now this is just me. I, I like to do it like a cross. That's how I anoint people. But he'd apply the blood. The daddy of the house would go around every entrance, every window, every door. He'd apply the blood. And listen, it wasn't no just a little dabble, do you? He wanted to make sure that death angel saw there was blood there. Some of you want your relationship with God to be secret service. No, I want the devil, whenever he comes by the Bailey house, to know we're not in the secret service. We are loud and proud. We are out and are proud of it. You know, I grew up in the church that I'm standing in right now, and I remember many times singing the great old song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Look Full Into His Wonderful Face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. If we've ever needed that type of word, I believe it's the day and hour that we're living in right now. And maybe you're in a place in your life where you need to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Can I tell you, it'll make things look so much better and Jesus will give you the strength to get through whatever you're walking through in your life. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to know how I could pray for you. There's an email link at the bottom of the screen. Why don't you send me an email? Let us know how we could pray and minister to you. And we'd love to see you in person at one of our regular services. The complete details are on the screen, or you can go to our website at happygospelchurch.com. Connect with us on social media. We're on all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. YouTube, YouTube, you can check out past services. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's service from Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida.